Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Rashad from RashadBeast.com. Welcome back to another vlog. And today, we are going to actually talk about something more music-related. I know I haven't done a lot of vlogs as of late, but I do definitely want to touch on this topic because it is a very, very, um, very, I'll say definitely very relevant to today's music world. And I think this can definitely benefit both sides of the artist and the producer in general to a degree because everybody wants to know how to get paid in the music business they don't know how to go about it they don't know about certain things and all these other things so today i want to kind of emphasize on that and today we're going to talk about the number one song in america right now which is panda by designer now designer is a rap artist from brooklyn new york who recently just popped off because of this single panda and um one of the main reasons why i shot this video is because there was a lot of speculation to seeing uh, a lot of speculation with the producer Menace saying that he only got paid 200 from the beat and he's not getting any other royalties, he's not getting no type of points and etc etc. So I shot this video just to kind of like emphasize on what really happened and shout out to DJ Payne One. Um, you can actually watch this video and he'll tell you exactly because he actually spoke to Menace himself. He'll tell you exactly what happened between the paperwork between Designer and Menace and Menace's beat. So I wanted to I wanted to use that as an example as to why publishing and paperwork is so important in the music business and why as a producer whether you're online or offline or you're both you gotta have your paperwork set at any time because you'll never know when somebody might actually just buy the exclusive rights and boom they blow up out of nowhere you know what I mean they blow up so Panda became number one in the country and designer back when he was unsigned he bought the beat for 200 for exclusive rights now, as producers, all our producers who really don't know too much about publishing or whatever, who just want their money, we see that as a come up, you know what I'm saying? Like, the ones who don't understand the education behind music or the, the, the inner workings of it, we see the 200 or any exclusive sale as a come up, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's a big payday. But one thing that they keep forgetting is that now that they have the full rights and the beat is completely off the market, and depending on your contract, depending on what type of rights you gave up or what type of rights that you, um, still have most of these producers don't know you feel what i'm saying most of these producers they just copy and paste the temp the template they just get a template contract and they put their name in it they don't even read the shit and they just put it up like all right cool now i can sell exclusive rights and i'm not trying to condemn anybody who done this because i'll tell you what i've done this i did this before you know what i'm saying i i did this shit before like i did all of that shit i'll take the template when i first started selling beats i've been selling beats for two years i'll take the template and what i'll do is I'll put my name in it, I'll, re I'll, I'll erase the template name and put my name in it and whatever, boom, there we go, contract is well and done. I read it, but at the time I still didn't understand what it was, you know what I mean? But what I'm trying to say is, um, most of the producers in the community are looking for just cheap come ups, not even cheap come ups, they're looking for come ups, you know what I'm saying? They don't care about royalties, most of them don't care about royalties or or uh, how the fuck they're gonna get paid if this was on an album, how the fuck they're gonna get paid if this shit was to blow up, whatever. They just want their money. They want that 350, they want that 200, they want that 150, however you sell your exclusive board. Now, just as DJ Payne One said in his video, don't think about the exclusive sale as just the only, the only bit of money that you'll make. Don't limit yourself to that shit. But in order for you to understand how to get paid as a producer, alongside of the 200 or the, the 350 that you that, that you sold the beat for. You gotta know your paperwork. You gotta understand publishing. You gotta understand how publishing works. And one thing that I wanna tell you to both my artists and my producer in this video is that publishing rules the fucking music business. You understand what I'm saying? Publishing rules the music <laughs> rules the music business. I had to come close because a lot of people don't understand that. I didn't understand it until I did my research. I bought a couple of books, watched a couple of videos. I did some research, did my own personal research, and I realized, okay, publishing is where the money is but that being said designer a lot of people were going around speculating and saying that oh designer only paid 200 for the beat and menace was getting fucked over he didn't get no paperwork in but actually as you can see in the original video shout out to bj Payne one check that video because i have that video in the link in the description as well if you want to check that out um this, this was inspired by it but in the video dj Payne one actually spoke to menace and when he spoke to menace menace told him yeah paperwork is all set I did everything I could in the, in the paperwork to make sure that I was going to get paid off the back end. You know what I mean? So Menace did it smart. Designer paid for an advance. The 200, the 350, the 400, the 500, whatever you sell your exclusive rights for, that set price is an advance. 
that means that it's just they're paying for the service. A designer paid 200 for the beat, which is a great investment because that shit took them to the top. And also, Menace is getting back in money from all those shows, all the radio play from the uh, from the Panda Jump. Everywhere that is being played, all of that shit adds up and it goes right back into Menace because he has his paperwork set and he has his paperwork registered in order for him to capture all those royalties. So what I need you producers to understand is that you need to pay attention to your publishing, you need to pay attention to your rights, uh, you need to pay attention to your contracts. Read your contracts, you know what I mean? Read your contracts, really read it, like really under, try to understand it. Get, get a couple of books on knowledge. What I would like to recommend is, hold on, give me one second, I'll go get the book, actually. All right, my bad, I'm panting, because I ran upstairs to go grab it. But what I would recommend anybody, the artist and the producer, I suggest you get this book. This is The Legal Aspects of the Music Industry by Richard Schollenberg. This book breaks down publishing, uh, how to get paid as a musician, revenue sales, split sheets, everything. This book breaks down how you get paid. <laughs> Excuse me, I ran upstairs. This breaks down every single day, uh, every single thing that you need to know about this music industry to get paid. Breaks down contracts, breaks down uh, publishing, uh, um, breaks down PROs, uh, ASCAP, BMI, and all of them. This book will teach you all of that. And you can get this book on Amazon for about $6. You're really playing for the shipping, for real, for real. Because uh, this is an old book. But I suggest you get this book if you really want to understand how to make money into this motherfucking business, because I'm telling you now, producers, selling your beats for 200 and you know um, your exclusive rights for 200, 350, that's, that's that's you know that's pretty good. And I'm not even gonna go in on the motherfuckers who are selling their exclusives for 50 dollars. But understand, there's more to life than just exclusive sales. You can make money from wherever that beat is being played. You know what I mean? The publishing is there for you. For that reason to get paid on different scales and a lot of you producers don't understand that and to my artists who are kind of hesitant on getting exclusive beats use designer as an example it's not not saying that you should go out and buy exclusive beats left and right left and right left and right but if you feel that you can make a song into a single and you put enough money behind it yeah you can definitely turn that $200 investment into a lifetime of Achievement, you know what I mean? You can turn that shit into a, into a great achievement to more and flip it into more money. Show money, all that stuff. What I'm really trying to say is look at this whole thing as an example. If any artist was to go to your beat website right now and purchase a beat for the full rights and he blows up with it, if there is nothing that you have registered, if there's no split sheets, there's no nothing that you can decide with this artist, you just sold him a beat and you don't care anymore. It doesn't, and there's nothing in your contract that binds this, that binds this customer telling him, you know, this song was to blow up, blah, 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 I need a piece of this, I need a piece of that, whatever, whatever. Not saying that that's really what it's going to say in the contract, but you understand what I'm talking about. You don't do that, he's going to blow up and you're not going to make no money. And you might get credit, you might get clout, but you're not going to get the longevity money. You're not going to get the long-term money. And in music, this is all, that's all it's about. It's all about long-term. It's all about your publishing. And a lot of producers be giving up publishing rights. And I don't think you should do that. You should never give up your publishing rights. So to my producers in the producer community, do some research on your publishing. Do some research on, on how to get paid as a producer. Understand your royalty rate. Understand that if you're getting points, points is like 3%, 2%, 4%. The most points that you can get is 7%. Understand that you can get points off of records, you know what I mean? Which is a percentage of that royalty rate of the artist. So pretty much what I'm saying is, that artist gets paid, you get paid. So if that artist doesn't sell the record, then you don't get no money from that record. But understand, if you say, look, for an example, I'll give y'all a good example. You were to sell a beat to an artist, he may be a major artist, you'd be like, all right, cool, I need 5,000 for the advance, now I need at least four points. Done, cool. Y'all sign off on a split sheet, y'all sign off on a contract, or he signed off on a contract, whatever. Y'all make sure the paperwork is correct, everything's set, boom, you just made $5,000, and now if he sells the record a lot, then you're going to make a lot of money in the long term. You're going to be getting checks constantly, constantly, constantly. Now, if it was like something like Designer, oh yeah, you're going to get paid left and right. Menace is getting paid left and right because he did the game smart. And a lot of people are like 200 for exclusive rights. That's not, that's not, that's not a high price or whatever. But I just understand, he's making thousands off, off of that $200 beat. He paid thousands left and right from it. So it doesn't even matter how much he sold it at first. His prices are going to go up now. You know what I mean? 
So that's pretty much all I wanted to say today, man. Um, shout out to DJ Payne One for actually shooting the video and inspiring me to shoot this video because I was gonna do it in a more general range, but now that we're talking about Designer and Panda and Menace, I definitely wanna use them as perfect examples to why you should understand your paperwork, why you should understand your publishing, why you should never give up your publishing rights as a producer, and why you should always follow up with the client, whoever purchases your exclusive rights, and make sure that paperwork is set in, 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 in the right order to make sure that if they ever was to put it on an album, you'll be getting paid off the album. If they was to make it a single, you'll be getting paid off that single. So, you know what I mean? That's all I want to say, man. And if y'all have any questions on publishing, any questions on uh, PROs, any questions on music industry and the inner workings of how to make money off it, feel free to hit me up at Jones at yahoo.com, set up a consultation, we'll talk about it, and I'll talk to you, I'll break everything down for you, exactly the way you like, or if I can't do it, definitely holler at my bro Cahill, Cahill, also known as K-Felon, if y'all producer, y'all should know him in the community, y'all should also know everybody else, also know everybody in the Peep the Industry squad, so you know, be sure to holler at one of us, and we'll be sure to set something up with y'all, and break this music thing down, but if I can't do it, I know my bro Cahill can do it, so holler at K-Felon Beats, and he'll be sure to wrap you up with the music and publishing and how it contracts work. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. Rashad beats out. Thank you for tuning in. Gone. Peace.